suppose suppose uh, we have a beaker and there's water kept in that beaker and uh, I heat I provide some fire I I heat this beaker having water now uh, if if I see the proper chronology of the event what happens this air is in contact with the lower surface of the beaker that the molecules in the lower surface of the beaker starts to vibrate the first molecule that is in the lowest uh, in the lower surface will start vibrating when this vibrate this molecules go and hit the molecule just above this molecule so the molecule above the lowest molecule starts to vibrate this molecule in turns hit the molecule above it and the molecule at the upper, uh, upper level also starts to vibrate this 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 event goes on each molecule go and hit the molecule above it and this vibration the chain of vibration starts ultimately the molecule that is that is in the upper surface of the beaker that starts to vibrate and that finally hits the water molecule that is in the lower surface of water that water molecule gets hitted by the molecule of the beaker the mole the vibration of that water molecule starts that water molecule hits another water molecule so in that in that process whole of the water molecule starts to vibrate and the vibration starts energy increases and if you measure the temperature temperature will be higher that's how water becomes hot the vibration of the water molecules increases so this is nothing based but basically a collision process the molecules of the container collide with each other first the container will become hot then that molecule will hit the water molecule and then water will become hot if you look to the two example when I kick the football that was a collision between my leg and football when you have a heat transfer from a heater into the beaker containing water in this heat transfer you have infinite amount of small collisions basically both are collisions me hitting a football or this water getting heated both are taking place through collisions but when the collision is at macroscopic level when I hit the football I don't call it a heat transfer I call it work and when the water gets heated you don't call it work you call it heat transfer but technically both are collisions collision is only method to change to transfer heat to transfer energy sorry collision is only method by which we can transfer energy from the surrounding to system when that collision is at macroscopic level we call it work and when that collision is at microscopic level we call it heat so this thing you must appreciate before we move ahead that both are collisions whether it is work or heat both are kind of collisions and both are the process both are the method to exchange heat energy between the system and surrounding and both are technically same but in this chapter we'll consider them to be two different things because heat in heat transfer we have infinite number of collisions there are many many collisions so we don't consider co collisions you know independently independently we don't look into each collisions by and large that is called as heat transfer so we will consider th this to be just for the sake of convenience we'll consider these two things to be differently and that these will be dealt differently in this chapter mathematically will be dealing by mathematically this work and heat will be dealt differently but technically we ha must have the understanding conceptually that both are the same thing both are collisions and the collisions are way methods to exchange energy between the system and surrounding so work and heat will be the two methods by which he energy will be exchanged between the system and surrounding as we'll be looking into this chapter these will be the only two methods to exchange energy between system and surrounding now we are in position to uh, see thermodynamic first law so let me introduce to you the thermodynamics first law thermodynamics first law uh, before before formally looking at thermodynamics first law uh, we are, have already seen heat and work are the two forms to ex for the exchange of energy between system and surrounding so suppose if i have to increase the energy of a system either i can do work or i can give heat to the system or i can do both i can do work on the system i can have heat transfer so heat transfer and the work are the only two forms of exchange of energy uh, between system and surrounding so whatever work I do and whatever heat I give the sum of both must be equal to the change in internal energy of the system 
so that's what thermodynamic first law is thermodynamics first law is very straight away uh, very straightforward and very simple basically thermodynamics first law is the energy conservation law it states that delta u u will be representing internal energy throughout the chapter small w will be representing work and small q will be representing heat so it says delta u delta u means change in internal energy delta u will be equal to the work done plus heat given and that's very obvious whatever work you do and whatever heat you give that must be equal to the change in internal energy it's just energy conservation and um, that's what thermodynamics first law is now thermodynamics first law specifies is delta u it does not give us any information about initial u because uh, internal energy of a system is hard thing to measure because internal energy in energy energy means all kind of energy your potential energy your kinetic energy and kinetic energy from all the degree of freedoms and potential energy of all kind elastic potential energy kilombic potential energy so it's not possible to exactly measure all kind of energy that exists inside the system so we never talk about internal energy we always talk about change in internal energy whatever energy the system has we cannot calculate it but suppose it is u and whatever work we do and whatever heat we give that will change the internal energy by the amount equal to w plus q now that will take system to a higher energy level we don't know the initial energy so we don't know the final energy as well but we know the change from initial to final if the change is 20 joule we don't know from it is going from 100 to 120 or it's going from 90 to 110 or from 130 to 150 but we do know the change in internal energy and fortunately in all kind of mathematics we require only the change we don't require initial and final energy so uh, in a, in, we will not be talking about the internal energy of any system because practically we cannot calculate all sorts of energy that exist inside the system so we never talk about internal energy we talk about change in internal energy and change will be equal to the work you do on the system and your heat you give to the system so that's what for thermodynamics first law is and it's very pretty easy simple and straightforward but uh, uh f is equal to ma is simple uh, uh also for that matter but still uh, f is equal to ma is a important law it's newton's law in mechanics because um, you know after having uh, studied so much about this energy conservation we know that work and heat given to the system must be equal to the change in internal energy it's not a big deal and f is equal to ma also seems not to be a big deal either because whatever force you apply that acceleration will be directly proportional to force it it seems very natural to us isn't it if the force is more the acceleration will be more and somehow it depends upon the mass also because if you apply same force to two different masses acceleration would be different the one having lesser mass will have more acceleration so acceleration must be inversely proportional to mass it seems very simple and easy but suppose we haven't been taught newton's law uh, ever and then uh, this thing would not have come to our mind directly you know it seems easy because um, we have spent much time with this formula similarly we are so much acquainted to energy conservation that thermodynamics first law seems to be very simple and we 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 wonder why this is a law at all this is a law because initially people were not so much acquainted with energy conservation as we are today so initially these things were put in the form of law and studied that's why it is a thermodynamics first law and this is just the law for energy conservation that's it now before proceeding ahead we must uh, look for the sign convention sign convention uh, for the in this formula we'll be putting work and heat with a proper sign so that we'll get delta u that means change in internal energy with a proper sign now work uh, the work we are saying that the work can be done on the system and that work can be done by the system suppose suppose we have a container like this and uh, uh, th this is a cylinder and this is a piston inside this we have gases and if uh, suppose this is a this is a movable movable piston if i if i if i apply force downward then this piston will move downward and the piston will move downward that means i am applying force from 
I am applying some external force and I am doing work on the system. In this case when the piston will move down surrounding will be doing work on the system and that well, because of that energy of the system will increase. So if the piston is moving down the volume is decreasing and the gases will be pushed downward that means externally I am pushing the gases that means I am doing work on the system. If I consider the gas to be as my system then work is being done on the system. If work is being done on the system the energy of the system will increase. But uh, suppose uh, suppose uh, the uh, the gases was at high pressure and outside you have vacuum or you have low pressure then this piston would have moved upward. When this piston moves upward the gases below the piston collide with the piston and these gases push the piston upward. In that case the molecule will be doing work and that means the gas would be doing work to push this piston upward. In that case my system would be doing work and if my system do is doing work it requires energy and that energy will come at the cost of its own internal energy. So internal energy will decrease if the gas, if the piston is moving upward that means if the system is doing work. So uh, if, if, if work is being done on the system the energy will increase, if the work is done by the system the energy of the system will decrease and whenever the energy of the system increases we take that thing to be positive. That means if we talk about work, if work is done on the system then the energy of the system increases. Then that means work done on the system is considered as positive, work done by the system is considered as negative. Similarly, uh, suppose we have a closed container and we have water inside this and this water is at a higher temperature than the surrounding. So this water will be giving out heat to the surrounding. If this water gives out heat to the surrounding then the temperature of this water will decrease and if the temperature decreases that means the internal energy of the water is decreasing. So if this water releases heat then the energy of the system will decrease. So in that case the heat lost by the system that means heat given by the system to the surrounding is taken as negative. And in the other way, if it would have been the other way around, suppose if I was heating the system containing this water, then the temperature of this water will increase. So in that case, the heat given by the surrounding to the system is taken as positive. So in nutshell, it can be said anything that increases the energy of the system is taken as positive and anything that decreases the energy of the system is taken as negative. And in book more precisely they write like this, work done on the system is positive because work done on the system, if the work is done on the system, the energy of the system will increase. And if work done, work is done by the system, system will do work at the cost of its own internal energy. So the internal energy of the system will decrease, so work done by the system will be taken as negative. Similarly, heat given to the system is positive and heat given by the system is negative. Now let's look on a very fundamental, very easy problem. Uh, 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 the problem states like a system has internal energy of 100 joule. 50 joule of heat is given to the system and system does work of 100, uh, 30 joule. Find the final energy of the system. Now, According to thermodynamics first law, if you apply thermodynamics first law here, then you will see this delta u, delta u is equal to w plus q, this is the statement of thermodynamics first law. I have written here minus 30, I have written here minus 30 because system does work of 30 joule. If system does work, the work is taken as negative. So here in the fir thermodynamics first law you have to be cautious enough to put the work and heat with proper sign. Because system is doing work, so the work is taken as negative, so I have put in work as minus 30. 50 joule of heat is given to the system. If heat is given to the system, the energy of the system will increase and that, and that heat is give, taken as positive. So I have taken it as plus 50. So that comes out as plus 20. That means delta U is plus 20. That means by 20 joule the energy will increase. The final energy if they are asking initially it was 100. By 20 it is increasing so the final energy of the system will become 120 joule. That's very straightforward. That's very easy. But the point that you have to pick here is whenever you are using thermodynamics first law you'll be dealing with Q and W. And you have to put these Q and W with proper signs.